Hey everybody, it's Henry of Mowers and Blowers. Welcome to another episode of Henry's Wrenching. It's a beautiful day today. It rained like a mother yesterday. And uh, it's probably it's 9 o'clock in the morning and it's like 65. A lot of rain. Uh, which one should I do? Oh, I'm so excited about this one. I'm definitely going to work on this one today. This big monstrosity is a Craftsman 6.75 horsepower vac chipper. I've had about five or six of these things, and um, they go for a lot of money. Brand new, these are like, Six, I've seen them for six, seven hundred bucks. Crazy, right? Um, you could sell these used for about three, you know, if you're lucky, three fifty. Anyway, so as you guys know, I got this for forty bucks. My uh, buddy Jason, who lives around the block from me, he does exactly the same thing. You guys know him, he does mostly snow blowers and stuff, big Aryans ones. Anyway, he likes these things too. Um, go check out his uh, fixes over at. Uh, Pate's Performance, P-A-T-T-A-Y, Pate's Performance. He, uh, it's a regular uh, follower of mine also, and um, he used to be called Forever Falcon 40, but now it's uh, Pate's Performance. Um, he has some really cool videos as well. Hopefully it shouldn't take too much to get this thing going. It looks like it's in excellent condition. The only thing I do worry about is probably the carburetor because a guy did say it was in his garage for five years without using it. Um, I believe he said he came with the house, but the guy didn't want to let it go in the house. So he said, I'll give you a hundred bucks for it, along with the sale of the house. Obviously you're buying a house like that, and this thing was like ten times the size of my house. <clears throat> When you're buying some kind of purchase like that, a hundred bucks is like nothing. It's not even a tip, you know what I mean? So uh, I think he got a good deal. It would have been a good deal for him if he actually used the damn thing, you know? So I'm actually glad it rained yesterday because basically it saturates everything here. And it makes it super easy to clean your shit. Just wipe it down and stuff, you know, makes it eat cleaner for you, easier to see things, if there's any leaks, whatever. Just take a wet, damp rag, and this thing's already damp, so basically just wiping off dirt is all, you know. He obviously had a garage sale at one time, and he has a label here for $350. That, that, that's pro probably the going rate, you know, for it, you know. $350. I mean, it's a little steep for a garage sale, you know what I mean? But, uh, <clears throat> some, some, some nut will buy it in that area. Actually, in that area, no. Because where he lived, Old Brookville, Long Island. If you guys would do a historical check on Old Brookville, it's super rich. Um, property is so expensive over there. I should know because my, uh, old uh when i worked at the restaurant chain i actually still do kind of work for them but um anyway the owner lives in old brookville that dude's a millionaire um property is very expensive over there super rich live there it's one of the richest areas in long island that and sands point sands point i think is the most richest i uh, dated a girl in sands point her house was like Castle man. She was a nice girl. She used to cook for me. Yeah, I'm not gonna go nuts. I'm just gonna wipe a little bit while I have an opportunity to because it's already wet and damp, you know. Makes it easier. Definitely easier than if it was in the winter, you know what I mean? Everything's frozen, your fingers are cold and all that. Um, this thing has a very unique kill system. The bagger needs to be connected for this thing to run. Because if the bagger wasn't connected, right, you'd have those crazy guillotine-like blades spinning around like a million RPM, you know? Stick your hand in there, you're going to lose your hand. Not just your fingers, the whole hand. 
It's no joke. I've taken apart these things several times and uh, it's got like a rolling merry-go-round looking thing, you know, with like blades on the side with these, um, I forget what they're called, they're, uh, it starts with an F, uh, fl flailers, yeah, it has like these flailers with blades on them, and um, those are the things that chop up the branches and stuff like that, you know, really a beast. That's probably why these things cost so much. It's heavy, got quite a lot of um, steel in it, you know. It's a quality machine, man. I bought my buddy Andy one. He, he wanted one for his yard to get rid of leaves. And um, I thought I got a good deal. 80 bucks for a yard machine's one. It was green, you know, it's just like this. It seemed like it was a little smaller, though. I think the engine was a little smaller. Um, engine, I believe, was a Tecumseh. Anyway, so he used it for a while, didn't really like it because his lawn is very plush, so it's difficult when leaves get stuck in the plush grass, right? You know, even a vacuum wouldn't suck it up, you know, it was difficult for him, so he didn't really want it. So he's selling his, it's taken him a couple of years to sell it, but he doesn't really sell, you know what I mean? He's never home either, so. Actually, he's always home now, but he doesn't put any effort into selling things, you know what I mean? Anywho, um, man, this thing's like new, guys. Look. Does that look like new? It's really not the season for it right now because it's like the beginning of spring, so there's not a whole lot of leaves unless you didn't pick up your leaves last year. And so they're like trash right now, you know? It'd be difficult to pick up those leaves now. So this probably won't sell for a high price until probably the fall, where everybody's doing fall cleanups, and they would want it, you know. So sorry for uh, rambling on and having you guys watch me talk, but uh, I'm talking about interesting things that you might want to know about New York, right? Anyway, so uh, it never comes with that hose. Look at this hose. It's in perfect condition. It has this uh, bar holder thing where it holds it here. And I guess you could use it with your hands to suck up things, right? It has a little cradle that you put the thing in like that. Bone dry. It smells like funky gas, but it's bone dry. It's an auto choke. I mean, it doesn't have a primer is what I mean, you know? So you just put it on run. Or this one over here. Put it on choke. You know? Just for fun. Maybe the guy was a dumbass and he didn't know about the choke. And that's why he didn't, said it didn't start. What if I put gas in here and just pulled it and see what happens? What do you guys think? Right? Because what if? He didn't know about that. He put it on choke. He didn't have it on choke, so it never started. Could he be like that? I wouldn't be surprised because he's a super rich dude. How, what does he know about these machines, right? You know what I mean? So, uh, I'm going to try that. Oh, let me check the gas. Ah, uh, the Earl. Sometimes it tells a big story just from looking at the Earl. Yep. Earl is full and very clean, like he never used it. Very clean. This does not need an oil change. It's mucho clean. I'm going to get some gas and put it in. I never have good luck with gas cans. They always leak. This one's been my better one. I'm not going to fill it up fully. I'm just going to do enough to start. That was probably more than that. So, like I said, it's an auto choke. There's no primer. So I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds, whatever. Make sure this is at the full throttle rabbit. This is at choke. Everything seems like it's, it's good, you know. It, no, it doesn't feel like any varnish, you know. If it's been sitting for a long time, even the choke thing is hard to move because there's varnish around the 
butterfly connections, you know. It's smooth, man. So is the throttle. Alright, just gonna see. Do I have to engage this thing? I think I do. Oh, wait a minute. Is this, is this self propelled? Holy cow, this thing is self propelled. Oh man, oh, I didn't know that. My friends, Andy's is not self propelled. Just push. Oh, this is good. It doesn't seem like it's going to start. You know what I'm going to try? I'm going to try this thing called, uh, hold on. I got this thing from Stable. Um, it was part of my sponsorship package. I haven't used it yet. Um, honestly, I'm a little um, weary about using it. Something that says start your engines, fixes non-running engines. If this thing actually worked, it would put mechanics out of business. It says, you just um, hold it upside down, right? And into the gas tank and spray and your engine will start. I'm like, get out of here. All right, you know what, man? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, look, it's leaking fuel. See that? Carburetor has a leak. As a matter of fact, all the gas has come out. So you know what? I just uh, sprayed that in there. You know what? It smells like ether. That's what it smells like. stuff didn't work at least for this application it didn't work you know so I'm gonna take the uh, I'm gonna take the thing apart I'm gonna remove the hose I'm just pushing this button here and this hose just comes off the hose over here that way it gives me room to work right see how this works over here is nozzle vac lift up handle so that's so that the stuff sucks from underneath right then if you move this like that it's for the hose basically there's a panel that a flap that blocks off the air there and it sucks there get it so we're gonna use mostly the nozzle which is that see how see how much it's dripping still man it's a pretty bad leak Probably the gasket. okay filter it's just you know wet from the gas you know but it's a pretty good filter you can see through it you know with the light it means it's okay okay to use you know but yeah that's flooded man if you look in here it's flooded completely mente it's flooded wipe this up before it ruins the paint Henry! Pinch off that fuel line! No gas in it anymore. Stripping. It's all gone. Nothing left. Alright, I'm going to take those three bolts off. This is one of those uh, Briggs carburetors are very easy to work on. It's three five sixteenths. Of course, this thing's in a way, so it's... <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's a pain.
I'm not going to be able to get this. How, how do you... See what I'm saying? I'm going to strip it. This thing is in the way, so you can't even get there. So I don't know how I'm going to get that off. Just use your brain, man. Put that there and do this. Can't be on that tight. Could strip it, though. Strip this, I mean. Move your hand, Henry. You can't see. Well, look. I need to work, all right? If you guys want to watch, man, you just got to make use your imagination. Oh, that's way too tight. See? This is a bad thing about this design. I will say that. neighbors walking by going, Henry, are you talking to yourself? Yeah, I'm crazy. I'm talking to myself. What's it to you? Keep walking. I mean, it's a lot looser now, but still, I can tell, it's still not good enough to finger um, loosen it. Can't even turn that. That sucked. Usually this is like a 10 second removal, you know what I mean? But this damn uh, thing here is in a way. This is this is the uh, place that you shove sticks in. You know, branches and stuff? If you wanna shred them, chip them. This thing comes right off. I'll say again, this thing comes right off. Gotta get a Phillips. Got a Phillips screwdriver here. Uh-huh. My dog. My dog eats just about anything. Dirt, grass, trees, branches, bark, plastic, rubber. And he doesn't get sick. I don't get it. If I had a stomach like that, Jesus. Everything comes off. Make sure not to step on it. I probably will. Why isn't this co oh breather hose on the back just like that Take the fuel line hose clamp to the side Wiggle it a little pinch it a little Use a screwdriver. Oh, What's up with that, bro? It's like half off. There's a fuel line. Ew. First part of that was kind of um, a dark colored fuel. Like pee with a lot of toxins. Like after you worked out or something like that and you pee and it's like really yellow. Really dark. I'm going to find the uh, right thing to do for that. Gotta get this stuff ready, Henry. Right. So because this thing is in the way again, can't use the impact. So it's a three eighths. This shoot thing in the way makes it a little bit more challenging to take apart. This thing should have been opened up by now if it was a regular uh, lawnmower, you know? Man, I'm stoked that this thing is self-propelled, man. I've never had. This is my first self-propelled vac chipper. I've never had one like that. That's really cool. And, you know, I think it works because, uh, you know, as I was pulling, by pulling that handle and pulling it, um, it was moving forward, as you saw. 
so that's cool. Very cool. Yeah, Self-propelled. Maybe I'll keep it. No, I'm not gonna keep it. I got like a million lawnmowers. Z-bend, right off the governor linkage. And there it is. There is the cabaretier. This is a half inch um, jet nut under here. Or is it just a nut? It's just a nut. You know, it doesn't look bad, man. You know, if you look at here, usually it's um, a lot of varnish in between there. And this is so gummy, you can't even turn it. This is not the case. It looks decent. Decent. I'm going to get a half inch socket. All right, what do you guys think it's going to look like? Hey, what's up, Henry? What's going on, Charlie? How are you doing? Well, I'd be better if the Mets won yesterday. Yeah, that was a tough one, man. What are you going to do? It happens. <laughs> Every season ain't going to be like last year for DeGrom. I know it, broski, and I'm surprised, man. I know it is a little surprising to see him struggle a little bit. Hey, look, not everybody's Superman, right? It'll, he'll be all right. You know what they got to do? Get rid of Vargas and sign Keiko. He had one bad game. Everybody's ready to get, get him out of town already. He's fine, Patrick DeGrom. He's fine. I just don't want to ever see Vargas touch the ball again. <laughs> you might get your wish. Oh, he's terrible. See you later, he, bro. I can throw better than him. Oh, yeah? And I, I'm still rehabbing my shoulder. <laughs> See you later. Have a good one, man. That was Charlie, my mailman. Such a nice guy. Uh, we're both huge Mets fans. Um, yeah, so look. it's The bowl looks dirty, right? But it, that's just discoloration, believe it or not. That's not actually the fuel. The fuel, there's a lot of sediment in here. Let's see if you guys can see. See the stuff on the bottom? Yuck. I'm going to clean this out. So, um, it's dry, right? But if you take your fingers and you go like that, it's almost like um, rubber, you know? Very gummy, yucky. Like if you took your fingernail and you went and you scratched it, you'd have crap underneath your fingernails and you wouldn't be able to get it out. That kind of feeling, you know? So, got one of these things. Let's see if this works well. Get it right in there and go... Ooh, warm. Oh, baby. Uh, that's like Ralph Cramden. Oh, baby. You young boys don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Honeymooners. One of the best series ever. You gotta have your the right power tools, fellers. Whoa, look at that, huh? Bad ass. Here. This is what the uh, jet nut looks like. Yeah, that thing's not gonna start like this. It's disgusting. I'm gonna get my torch tip cleaners. So these Briggs ones, it's unlike the Tecumseh ones, where um, there's a super small hole in there, the top. This one doesn't have that. It's just this. So I know that these torch tip cleaners will work for this hole and this hole. And there's there's stuff in here. You can feel it. I can barely 
I can barely stick it in. <clears throat> I'm going to carefully take this gasket out so I can wire wheel this area here to get it clean. So here we go. The magic of Hollywood. Abracadabra! Ding! Nice, huh? I just went like this. Put it up to the light, see if you can see the hole. You know, see the hole, but it still kind of looks like it, just stuff from the side. It's not like a perfectly crisp hole, you know what I mean? There, now it's better. And then I'm gonna get some carb cleaner. You know what? I don't think this is going all the way in. Which is a little odd. Boy, am I glad I tried that. I'll tell you why. Because uh, I was trying to, you know, get the torch tip cleaner in here and it wouldn't go in, right? And then I took the thinner one and I pushed hard and then I pushed it through, right? And now, after I pushed it through, I can't see through it, which means there's a lot of crap in there. It's blocking the big hole now. That definitely wouldn't have started. Right there. Now I just shoved it through there. Look at that pile of gunk on the tip there. That was inside this one. Now it'll be clean. I'm going to finish it off by using some stable carb choke and parts cleaner. That uh, other stuff, that uh, start your engines thing. I think there are a lot of things that you have to have in place for that to work. Such as clean carburetor. <laughs> you don't have a clean carburetor, it's not going to start. So it's basically like, you know, starting fluid is what it is. Just instead of putting it in your carburetor, or shooting it in your carburetor, you shoot it in the gas tank, because it's really potent. Alright, that is a clean jet nut. That is a clean bowl, right? Now we've got the carburetor over here. which is still kind of clean, but clean the joints right there where the butterfly is. Here's a hole, see where it goes. Emulsion tube it came out of, this one here. Same. So that, you know, that's clear. Now you do it in the emulsion tube. Fuel, lift the bowl. Hole under here. A lot of varnish here. Let that stuff come off. I bet you this um, gasket 
The bold gasket is going to puff up like a balloon. I should have taken it off. We'll see. You know what? It's starting to feel puffy already. See? I'm going to take this pin out. Don't use that pin. Get the bowl off. Get a pin. Not a varnish on that pin. I gotta clean that. This is gonna be like an hour long carb clean <laughs> because I'm not cutting it. I'm letting you guys see exactly what I do. As you know, I've started to do that format now where I'm showing you exactly how to do it. You guys can skip forward if you don't have the patience to watch, but there are newcomers that say, well, how did you clean that needle? Well, how did you clean that bowl? You know, my older videos, I used to just say, oh, that bowl's dirty, and then cut. Now it's clean. They're like, well, how did you clean the bowl? I'm like, use your brain, man. Do what I did. Wire wheel, carb cleaner, you know, you can figure it out. But, you know, new, there are lay people out there who absolutely have no idea how to do it, you know? So, I'm going to show you. Yeah. Look at that. Nice. So, that's clean. This could be clean. All right, so I'm just going to clean this, okay? Boom! Now, um, inspecting this. I guess it's okay. The seat looks a little puffy. You guys know what I mean by puffy. It just looks puffy, you know. If it's puffy, it's no good because the hole will get pl uh, plugged. I had to step away for a while. Couldn't find my uh, air compressor thing. That's a pretty clean carburetor. Put it back. Put your clean needle in here. Drop into the channel where the seat is. I think by now that uh, rubber seat 
has dried from the carb cleaner so it's not as puffy. Instead of blowing carb cleaner in there, I use the compressed air to get any debris out of the hole because, like I said, carburetor cleaner will blow everything up like a balloon. So I still don't like the way that looks here. See how that's puffy like that? It's supposed to be straight down, not popping up like that. That's probably why it, uh, you see that? That's probably why it um, was leaking before. It's not supposed to be puffy like that, and it's supposed to be like this. But it's sticking up like that. So if it's sticking up like that, um, fuel will have a difficult time to close the hole, you know? But if you really want to test it, I'm not supposed to be able to blow any air through here now because supposedly it's seated, right? And it's blocking the hole. Okay, it's not. And then fuel is supposed to flow freely when it's down like that, right? So I should be able to blow. And I can. And it's like this. I can't. All right, well, maybe it'll work. It's worth a try. So we got our clean bowl now. We got our clean carburetor. I think I'm going to have problems with this for sure. We'll see. I have another two of these carburetor parts that I could probably squeeze a seed out of it. Uh oh. Where is that? Okay. Almost thought I lost the uh, nut gasket. So now we're our jet nut is cleaned. Screw it back on here. It's starting to rain again. Okay, I can blow into it. Then when it's upside down to mimic the uh, fuel, pushing the float bowl up, and I can't blow into it. So you know what? I'm gonna just attach this hose, the fuel, back into here. Hold it like this for a little while and see if it leaks. So, it doesn't seem like it's leaking, you know, because fuel is flowing freely into here. I guess I'll uh, put it on. You can't put it on without taking this fuel back off. Yep, see, look. I don't know. Does it seem like there's not much fuel in here? Take this back off again and see if there's any fuel in the bowl. I feel a lot of fuel, so I guess the fuel is getting into the bowl. Okay. getting rained on man it's only water a shower don't you
Back on the Z bend. bolts back in and tighten first evenly on each side uh, just from just from thinking I I'm thinking it's gonna leak that's what I'm thinking it's that uh, rubber seat that I'm worried about I don't like how that float was just sitting up like that I've seen that lots of times and it always leaks I'm going to have to take this apart again. You watch. Okay, that's on there. Choke moves, see? Opens and closes. It's not leaking right now. See how crazy I am when it gets to cleaning your shit? It just drives me crazy. I mean, I swear I don't have OCD, but I might might have a little. Also, this thing here, it's missing a hubcap. It's kind of like my van, huh? It's missing a hubcap. This uh, looks just like the Troy built ones. I think I might have a spare somewhere. I'm not sure, but it might say Troy built. So, hey, better better to have a hubcap than no hubcap, right? I mean, look, you don't buy a Ferrari with mis mismatched um, wheels, do you? Not saying this is a Ferrari, but this is the Ferrari of vac chippers, unless you want to talk about billy goats and stuff. But all right, so look, we have the fuel connected. It's not leaking, you know. I'm gonna put that thing on because it has something to do with the auto choke. It needs to be connected for it to work right. This could use a new gasket, but I think it'll work. Then the breather hose, line up the holes. I wish I had my impact. I mean, I, I wish it worked for this. You know what? I'm, I think this is good enough to, for it to start. I'm going to try it now.
gonna run out of gas. There's no gas. I don't know how it's running, there's no gas. Awesome. How about that, guys, huh? Awesome, it sounds great, runs great. See that self-propulsion? See that back blow up nice and big? It means the suction's really heavy, you know what I'm saying? Man, that's, that's bad ass, man, I am stoked. Yeah, it took kind of a long time to do it, but, uh, you know, man, I wanted to show you guys. Not only that, that shoot in the way didn't really help things, you know what I mean? So, as I suspected, while it works great, it's dripping fuel, has a fuel leak. And I'm telling you, that seat was hinky. I know it's the, 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 the seat, so. Find another carburetor that has a good seat in it and replaced it. Or I can just go buy another carburetor for eight bucks. I'm gonna find another carburetor that has that seat. So I took the carburetor back off again and to remove the seat, I just take like a wood screw, shove it in there, turn it, Usually it works. So I had a spare, I mean I actually have a lot of spare Tecumseh ones. It seems to fit in there okay. Well right now bickers can't be choosers. I actually have two spare carburetors but it's not the auto choke kind, you know what I mean? Oh, that's no good. I don't think this is going to work. It's not the right seat. I might have to end up buying a new carburetor because sometimes the carburetor... I mean, that, I mean, that looks like it's seated right, but I just don't... I don't know. Here. Actually, that might be all right, I guess, I guess. Okay. You know what? That might work. I'm gonna put it back together again. So I had to take a time out for a bit uh, because a guy drove from Connecticut and rented a trailer to pick up my DYT 4000. I'm selling it. I had it listed for 1200, but I didn't really think I was going to get 1200 for it. So you know what? I got to get rid of my stuff, and this guy is practically stealing it from me. I'm giving it to him for 750 for this. Um, what, what am I going to do? You know, I, I don't want to keep it in my garage for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? Nobody's going to give me 1200 bucks for this, uh, being that you can get brand new ones at Home Depot for 1200 bucks. you know? It's a nice tractor, but remember, you guys know, it's a repurposed, uh, engine, you know? So, I mean, I guess I'm all right with 750. I'm not completely, you know, I'm reluctantly selling it for 750, but 750 will go a long way, you know what I mean? 750 will help me buy... 10 more tractors or 20 more tractors or parts for those tractors that I fix, you know? So I have to do it, you know? 750 is no small stack of change either, you know?
So as you guys saw, it's a sad day for mowers and blowers to be giving that beautiful DYT 4000 away for 750. But you know what? Sometimes you just got to let go of things, you know what I mean? Look at that. I have a lot of room in my garage now though. But yeah, um look, 750, like I said, it's I guess it's okay. I would have liked more, but get rid of stuff so I can move on is fine. I just uh Remember, I put the Tecumseh uh, seed in there. It seems to be okay. I'm just wiping this nice and clean so I can tell if there's any drips. Uh, this was in the rain, so it's water that drips there once in a while. And I just filled it with gas again, and I don't see any leaks as of yet. But guys, look at how new this thing is, man. It's like brand new. I just need to find a hubcap for that, and I know I probably have a similar one that I could just pop on there. But uh, looks like it's good to go, you know. I'm going to start it up again and <clears throat> connect this hose. And uh, then we'll see if it drips, if it leaks uh, fuel. All right, so I'm going to try it now for the final time. No leaks. Uh, rabbit. Does it need choke still? Remember we started it before. Man, that thing runs great. Man, oh man, guys, is that a badass piece of machinery or what? Damn, that's nice. I'm going to take pictures of it right now and uh, list it for sale. Anyway, you guys saw it did take quite a while for me to do this because, you know, we had a hiccup with the uh, seat in the carburetor. Carburetor was pretty dirty, you know, but we cleaned it well, took it all apart, uh, shined it up and stuff. I cleaned my shit. You guys should clean your shit. Um, man, this thing runs great. It looks great. Uh, I just need to find that hubcap and uh, self-propelled. And this thing's a, what a find, man! Forty bucks. I'm gonna put this up for three seventy-five, and maybe end up selling it for three hundred. You know what I mean? You always gotta up the number, you know, and then you go back and forth with it. Gives you a little bit of room, but ideally, I'd like to get about three for this, you know, which is a little on the high side, you know. But you know what? People desperate enough to want to clear their yard, man. They want this thing. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I'll put it up for 375 But anyway, uh, yeah, we fixed this up today in one episode and uh, sold my DYT4000. How about that, huh? See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. This is the cap. Hey, better a broken one than none, right? Aw, oh, man, don't fit. Does it? I don't think it fits. Oh, does it look exactly like that? It should fit. Look, it looks exactly like it. I'm not putting it. It fit on there. It just needs a little bit of banging.
Much better. Of course, on a pick, I uh, didn't follow my traffic uh, rules very well. I got a red light ticket, man. 80 bucks. That's not worth it. You know what? One in a while, I guess it's okay. Hey, one of my stickers made it to Delaware. Thanks, Robert Nighthawk. Hey guys, support my channel, buy a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram, at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, mowersblowers.com. See you guys on my next project. Have a great...